All right, um, I'm going to try to show you some polar graphing stuff in this video. And to start with, let's say we do r equals sine of 2 theta. I'm going to start doing this in maybe not the way you would expect. I'm going to start by actually graphing this rectangularly, where I've put r on the vertical axis and theta on the horizontal axis. And I'm assuming you know how to graph um, r equals sine of 2 theta. If you don't, you should look that up, because we're going to need to be able to do that. So now what I'll do is I'll take this graph, and I'm going to turn this into a polar graph. So I have my polar graphing grid, and I know this is what my rectangular graph looks like. And from that, I glean kind of a lot of information. So let me set up my polar grid. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to highlight that and call that r equals 1. And let's do some angles. So 0, I'm going to do the pi over 4 angles here, because they're the important ones for this graph. So the way I chose the important angles, uh, maximums and minimums of the rectangular graph are going to be important. So I have this. And now what I'm going to do is start the process. So what you do is you find the zeros of the rectangular graph, and you dot those in. So theta equals 0 is a 0 of the rectangular graph. So what I've done is I've dotted in a guideline. It's actually a tangent line, but a, a line that's going to help me to form the graph at theta equals 0. So I go straight across the kind of the x-axis or the polar axis. The next one is at pi over 2, so I'm going to dot that in. And now the next one's at pi, but I've actually already dotted that line in, and then 3 pi over 2, and uh, 2 pi. So I've got all the lines that I need, and now I'm pretty much ready to graph. So I'm going to, when theta is 0, r is equal to 0. So I'm going to put a point at the origin. It's hard to see because I decided to use blue for that. When theta is pi over 4, r is 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a point at uh, 1 comma pi over 4, so up there. And now as theta increases from 0 to pi over 4, r is going to increase. So I'm going to trace that out on the rectangular one so you can see which part I'm talking about. And what happens is, when you're graphing in polar, as r increases, or rather as theta increases from 0 to pi over 4, r has to increase. It increases pretty quickly at first, and then it kind of slows down. So I get something like this. Now between pi over 4 and pi over 2, r is going to go from 1 back to 0. So on the rectangular graph, that's going to look like this part that I've shaded in. And on the polar graph, it's going to look like this. All right, so a lot of symmetry. That's, that's one petal of the graph I'm going to get. And you can see it's already symmetric over pi over 4, that particular petal. And let's keep going. So when theta is, so at pi over 2, theta is back to 0. At 3 pi over 4, theta uh, r is actually negative 1. So what's going to happen is, instead of having a point at 1 comma 3 pi over 4, I'm going to have a point at negative 1 comma 3 pi over 4, which graphically is the same as 1 comma 7 pi over 4. So I'm putting a point there. Now if you go in along a line, so I went in along pi over 2, you have to come out along pi over 2. So here's the part of the rectangular graph that I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go in along pi over 2, I come out along it, and I go to that point. Now from there I'm going to go back to 0, and that means that I'm going to trace this part of the graph, and that looks like this on the polar graph. And now at 5 pi over 4, by the time I get to 5 pi over 4, r is going to be 1 again. So I fill in that dot at, five, at 1 comma 5 pi over 4. Part of the rectangular graph I'm graphing is this, and so let's fill that in. Now we're going to go back to the origin again. So here's the part of the rectangular, which becomes this on the polar graph, and kind of a so on and so forth situation. By the time I get to 7 pi over 4, r is actually negative 1, so instead of getting the point at 1 comma 7 pi over 4, I get the point, I, I graphically appear to get a point at 1 3 pi over 4. But it's actually when theta is uh, 7 pi over 4, it's r is negative 1. So I'm going to trace this part, so it swoops out like that. If you go in along a tangent line, you go out along the same tangent line. And then finally, you're going to get back to the origin, and that looks like this. Alright, so kind of to summarize what happened here a little bit, I started at 0, 0, I sweep out to 1 comma pi over 4 back to 0, 0, and then I sweep out to negative 1, comma, 3 pi over 4, and then over to here, and then over to here. So when you're looking at a, a graph in polar, you don't necessarily know what value of theta generated it, because the points are not unique. 
Um, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.